Okay, so we've reached one o'clock. I think it's a great time to start. First off, I'd like to start by um, thanking you all for coming to our first ever virtual guided tour of SSIS. Um, normally, we would have you call us on the phone, you'd come for an appointment, we'd sit down for a meeting, and then we'd be able to walk you around the campus because our campus is really something we're proud of here at SSIS. But unfortunately, given the circumstances happening around the world and the closure of our campus, we're not going to be able to give you any guided tours of the different classrooms. So we thought a great way to bring this into your living rooms for you would be by offering a tour using our 360 campus tour on our website and walk you around. So you'll have the opportunity to ask questions. If you look at the chat, chat section of Zoom. We're asking that you put your questions in there. Um, my colleague George, if you could put there when you pick a name, not you could either put it to everyone or to George. Please don't put them to me because I won't be checking that while I'm giving the tour, but I will stop every once in a while for George to let me know if any of the participants have any questions. I ask that you stay muted during the tour so that we're not having any noise interference. And um, if you have questions that we don't get a chance to answer while we're giving the tour, um, don't worry. Once they're once you put them in the chat section, we will write answers back to you and also post a frequently asked questions. And now more than ever, I welcome your phone calls or if you want to set up an interview or conversation by by Zoom or by Skype, an individual one on one, we are more than happy to do that here at the school. So let's get started. Um, we're starting today on our website. And if you see up here in the top corner of our website, you can see the 360 campus tour. This is available to parents, to anyone at all times. So I welcome you to go ahead and take an opportunity to look through here late, and later on at a more convenient time for you. But we're gonna click on it and it will start, it will begin our tour today. So we're gonna begin here in the plaza. And what we're looking at as we look above the plaza area here are our core values. We value here at SSIS academic excellence, sense of self, balance in life, dedicated service, and respect for all. Um, our core values are very important to us here at SSIS. These are like the uniforms um, that when kids come to our school, they take the uniform off when they leave the school day and you don't know that they are an SSIS dragon. But by instilling our core values into our students and into our curriculum, it's a trademark or a mark of a student at our school and you could stop any dragon on the street and ask them what are the core values and what do they mean to you and they would be able to tell you. So we feel that this is an important thing to impart upon our students. We're very lucky we have 1,150 students here on campus, but as you can see as the panorama goes around, we have lush spaces and lots of park-like campus. We have three different buildings and if we were doing a virtual tour, we would probably get 5,000 steps in walking around the whole campus. So my Fitbit goes a little crazy when I give two or three tours a day. I feel like quite the rock star or the marathon runner if you want. Um, but we're gonna take an opportunity now then to, to go into some of the different rooms. Um, we'll look real quick at SSIS from above and you can get a different view of, the, of what I'm talking about when I say how large the campus is. This area here is our high school building. This is where our students in grades nine through 12 do their learning. We have a view of the street here. We have our, our long jump pit here, some field space for our kids. We can actually run two to three simultaneous football games at one time. We have our early childhood pool, our cafeteria. This is our middle school building here. This is where students in grades nine or six through um, eight learn and then Coming here, we have our elementary school. And then to the front of our elementary school is our auditorium. And our elementary school is where we have our early childhood. So we take kids as young as three all the way up to grade five. So this is just an aerial view. We're gonna now take a moment to go into some of the different classroom areas. I'm gonna start us off with the elementary school and we're gonna take a stop into the library. So in the elementary school, we have um, a library that is dedicated for the students in EC3 all the way up to grade five. The library has a wide range of books and different genres and different topics for the students. And we have um, 
library is a subject that the kids will go to as one of their specials for the day. So the students are pretty lucky within the classroom. Um, they'll have their core subjects, but we have specialist teachers so the kids can go to PE, which is taught, or physical education, which is taught by a PE teacher. They can go to music, which is taught by a specialist music teacher, art by a specialist art teacher. Um, and from grades one through five, our students actually have the chance to take a drama class. Um, in early childhood up through grade five, our students learn Vietnamese as a foreign language. So they, we don't do any other foreign languages in um, elementary school, but Vietnamese. And then for the regular classroom subjects, they're in their classrooms. We're gonna leave one of the, the library and go into one of the classrooms. We're gonna take a look here into classroom three. So you can see the setup of the classrooms are pretty um, non-traditional in that we have tables and chairs. There's a carpet area for the students. We're very proud of our flexible seating possibilities for the students in elementary school. Um, this gives them the chance to, to move around the classroom and sit and learn in a space and in a, in a chair or an area that is most conductive to their learning. Um, don't worry, it's not running around and um, out of control. The kids do follow rules. At the beginning of the year, they set up rules with the classroom teachers about who gets to sit where and when and how it's working and the rules that they will follow for the behavior. But even more important than our flexible learning spaces in the elementary school is that we're very proud of is our elementary school curriculum. So in the elementary school, we follow the standards and benchmarks that come to us from the US for math, science, and social study, or sorry, English. For social studies, we use an international curriculum. So the kids don't learn about US presidents, but they'll learn about communities and societies in general. Um, we have developed super units. So the kids do interdisciplinary units of study. And I know that sounds like a mouthful. Um, it's just a different way of teaching. It's similar to the primary year program in the IB, but instead of it being just math in isolation, we take and include math in the literacy study and include science in the literacy study and look at units of inquiry as a whole. Kind of like when we go to work, our, our bosses don't ask us for a project to, to hand in a report and say, give me the English section of the report on Monday and the math section of the report on Tuesday. No, they say, I want the report. And we're combining all of those different aspects of the report in one. And so that's what we're teaching our students to do as learners. We also know that there are math and literacy skills that the kids need to have that don't necessarily fall under the umbrella of a unit or inquiry. But don't worry, we teach those separately. So we pull those out and during the school day, the kids will have targeted math instruction and targeted literacy instruction as well because we do realize that the foundational skills are extremely important to our learners. Um, through the, the super units change. We have four different units throughout the year. The first unit is understanding ourselves. The second is understanding others. In the third, it's the world. And um, in the fourth, they're understanding the environment. So all of the units um, can be found back on our website under the section for um, Academics, when you look at elementary school, at each grade level, we have the super units and they build upon themselves as we go up through the grade levels. So that's how the, the curriculum works in the elementary school. And as we're panning around here in the elementary school, if you notice here, we have one, and then we're gonna come across a little bit further. I'm gonna move a little bit faster to the right. We have one teacher, one teaching assistant, and over here in the corner, we have a learning support teacher. We're very lucky at, at Saigon Health International School. As a not-for-profit school, all of our resources go back into ensuring that your children are getting the best educational experience that they can. And so in this instance, we have a learning support teacher in the classroom, and he's working with some of the students to make sure that they're understanding everything that's happening in the curriculum. We have um, specialist teachers for English additional language, at each grade level. We do limit the number of English additional language or EAL students that we accept at every grade level, but we are able to um, accommodate most needs. 
um, especially in the younger years, with this additional support that we're able to provide. We have additionally a specialist coach in technology, in um, STEM, and in literacy. So those coaches all work with the teachers to ensure that the curriculum is moving forward and to ensure that everything aligns from one year to the next and that we're meeting the needs of all of the learners. Um, so at this point, I'll stop and ask George if we have any questions. And so far. Okay, so George says, we have no questions. Please don't be afraid to stop and ask if you have any questions. If we were doing this in real life, I would be turning to you and asking the same. And so I'm more than ready and more than willing to answer any questions that you have. So we're going to take a look real quick. We're going to go down to an early childhood classroom. And here we're in our early childhood classroom. Early childhood for us are our three through five-year-olds. So that's early childhood three and four and kindergarten. In early childhood three and four, we take six three-year-olds and 12 four-year-olds and make one classroom of 18 students. These 18 students have one teacher and two teaching assistants. Now you're looking around this room and saying, wow, that's a lot of grown-ups. And I promise you, you're right. These are a lot of grown-ups. A lot of these grown-ups are parents. So what you're seeing now is a kindergarten classroom, and they're having a Friday morning reading session. So on Friday mornings, the kindergarten has a half an hour at the beginning of the day for family reading time. So parents are welcome to come in and look at books with the kids and read with the children. We know as a school that literacy and early reading is a key indicator of success for students. And so we're really trying to make sure that our parents have that in their interactions with the students and that we can help facilitate this. As well as, as, well as bringing parents in for um, the Friday morning reading sessions, we bring parents in at the end of every super unit. There's a celebration because the kids are working on projects through the super unit and parents are welcome to come in for the celebrations. We actually have a parent education series that works across all divisions where we're bringing parents in to teach them about our curriculum, to teach them about technology, and to um, expose them to the different things that we're, the ways that we're teaching at school. Because even for me, having grown up in America, the ways that teachers are teaching nowadays are very different than how it was when I went to school. And we really, un do not underestimate how important the partnership between parents in the home life is and parents in the classroom are and how we can really work together to make sure that our kids get the most out of school. We have a question. Yes, we have our first question from Thuy. Thuy asks, do Vietnamese students learn Vietnamese or EAL? Thuy, that's a great question. So Thuy is asking us if Vietnamese students learn in, um, Vietnamese or EAL, and that would depend a little bit on the grade level. Um, Vietnamese is actually taught to all students, and it is the only class where we stream students in the elementary school based on their abilities. So our Vietnamese is taught by our Vietnamese teaching assistants, and they will um, take the kids in different groupings. So the kids who have Vietnamese, who are learning Vietnamese at home, who speak and read and write Vietnamese, will go into one group, and students who are brand new to the language will be in different groups. And di um, Usually we can have up to four different grade levels or levels in one grade level. Um, EAL is only given to the students who, when upon coming into the school, when the students go through the assessment that we determine that their English level needs the support, they work with specialist EAL teachers. If they are a, um, a very beginner, then during Vietnamese time, they might go to their EAL, to an EAL class. But if they are a more advanced English learner and they just need some in-class support, they would be able to access the Vietnamese classes as well. I hope that um, answers your question, please. All right, so I think we'll finish up here. We're going to take one quick look at the elementary playground. Um, the early childhood, I guess I should show you this because this is important. Again, being a not-for-profit school and being located in the wonderfully green area of Pumi Home, we are blessed to have a lot of space. And this is the early childhood playground. So this playground area is just for our youngest learners. The students from three years old through um, kindergarten play out here. They have a sand area, they have climbing areas, they have swing sets, quite a bit of shade. 
and it's right located on the riverfront. So it's a great area for early childhood learners. Um, when they are outside at recess, there are always there is always supervision for them. Um, and we have a no hat, no play policy for the kids as well. And now we're going to take a look real quick at the big elementary playground. So this is our elementary playground. If you can see in the background, the big red climbing frame. And as it spans around, you can see we have the space here for two, two football games again. Um, our kids have a lot of space to run around at recess time. Our sports teams have a lot of space for practices. And in, in elementary school, the kids are able to participate in a variety of sports, including um, swimming, football or soccer, basketball, and track and field and cross country. Um, and badminton as well. And I'm gonna bring us around here to the back area. So obviously none of us were planning on um, ever doing a guided virtual tour in this way. So I have to let you know that some things have changed on the playground. Behind this area here where my, where my pointer is, we have actually built little, the Little Dragons Playground or Park. And that's a wooded area with um, bird cages or bird feeders and butterfly feeders that was developed by our first graders as part of their super unit on um, the environment. So they become campus rangers and they learn about the ecosystem of the different animals and um, organisms learn living on our in, um, in our in our outdoor areas. Okay, so I think that closes us up for the elementary school. We're going to go around and take a look into the middle school. We're going to start again in the library. We do have three libraries on campus, so I won't take you through the high school library. I just want to let you know that we do have three separate libraries, so all of our different learners can have different library areas. Um, below the library is the cafeteria, so you'll see the star here, but I'm going to actually have you look real quick out the windows to the back because that's one of my favorite areas on campus. That's the Dragon's Den, and the Dragon's Den is an area for our middle school students to be middle schoolers. There are ping pong tables set up there. There are board games. There um, are, there's a big chess field and there's areas um, and some puzzles. And it's an area where during breaks and at recess time, middle schoolers can hang out, be with each other in supervision. We all know that middle school years are what I would call the yuck years. It's where your sweet elementary student has turned into something that's not quite an adult and not quite a child and they need a little bit of extra support to do lots of things. We're very lucky. We have a dedicated middle school building. We have our students in grades six through nine in this building. We have a dedicated middle school principal, a counselor for the middle school, and um, a dean of students to help out in the middle school. So we really have a lot of eyes and a lot of touch points on our students here on campus for the middle school. Um, we're gonna go and look into one of the classrooms. I'm gonna take you into classroom two. Oh, sorry, I ended up in the elementary classroom two. So you can see some learning going on here. One of our, oh, did I say the wrong grade? I must've said the wrong grade level. Sorry, George, George is giving me a correction here. Middle school is grade six through eight. Sorry, again, this is our first time doing this, so I would have been able to read it from your faces if we'd been standing next to each other. But um, middle school also uses the idea of flexible learning spaces. We are, as you can see from the students here, they're using laptops. We are in a one-to-one -one Apple school. So all kids need to bring a MacBook to school in grades four through 12. Um, and we are the only um, Apple Distinguished School in all of Vietnam. And you say, well, of course you're an Apple Distinguished School, you use their products. But that's not why we're an Apple Distinguished School. We're an Apple Distinguished School because Apple has seen our teachers presenting at conferences and said, wow, we really like some of the things that are happening at that school. Let's investigate a little bit further. And so they came to our school, they investigated a little bit further and asked us to go ahead and apply to become an Apple Distinguished School. We had to create an iBook that showed all of the innovative education things that are going on at the school. And one thing that I really would like if you are finished with the tour here, and you go back on the website, if you go to the section on the Apple D Distinguished School under about, you can even have a look at our iBook and see all of the amazing tech things that we're doing. 
And we were very lucky to be doing these tech things because they put us in a great position to pivot from a in-classroom school or an on-campus school to an off-campus or virtual school. We were really able to leverage all of the technology that we're using in the classroom to students using it off-site. Um, in the elementary school, our students use Seesaw from um, kindergarten through grade five. In the middle school, they use PowerSchool Learning and the same learning platform is used in the high school. So there were some adjustments that needed to be made. Kids had to learn to go to classes through Google Meets, but figuring out where to find their homework, to meet up with their teachers, to leave messages for their classmates, to do group work, those were things that the kids were already used to doing and using technology to do. Um, they, these were skills that our teachers were already doing and were using technology to do. There's actually a great story on our website talking about the fact that we were notified on Sunday nights that kids were not going to be able to come back to school on Monday. And we had our teachers come in on the Monday and get everything ready. And by Tuesday, by Monday afternoon, we were all ready running virtual school. We sent iPads home with our youngest learners. So our kindergartners through, um, well, everyone actually in the elementary school below um, grade three, three to grade three and below were required to come to school to pick up an iPad to use at home. Um, don't worry, we don't expect the kids to be on, on their computers and on technology all day because we're on virtual school. We are also sending learning packets home. So kids have um, paper resources as well, as well as PE projects, art projects, and um, music projects for them to be doing. So we were very lucky that we were in a position to be able to pivot to an online platform without too much of a delay or a stress for our students and our families. Um, in the middle school, we begin our formal foreign language program. So students in the middle school will continue if they're Vietnamese nationals with Vietnamese after school. And um, during the school day, they can choose to take Spanish or Mandarin. Um, we continue to have an EAL program in the middle school and a learning support program as well. Middle school is the, the, the place where students begin to get used to the idea of, of changing teachers. So there is a bell schedule. The students have four classes a day of 80 minutes per class, and they rotate um, on an even day and an odd day schedule. They have a different teacher for math than they have for science and English and um, social studies. So it's getting ready for the changes that happen in high school and the organization and the the rigor that is required in high school, but in a little bit more of a nurturing environment for the students. We also, knowing that students in the um, middle school need some extra support, we have what's called an advisory block during the day. So every day after lunch, the students have 20 minutes where they go to one classroom teacher. They're broken into small groups of 13 students per teacher. And there they have, um, house league activities. So we have a house program in the middle school and in the high school, and they have um, drop everything and read or dear, dear time as well. So it's a great chance for the kids to build relationships as they transition from a elementary classroom homeroom for the full day to the separate se switching classrooms because you might not have the same person in your math class that you have in your science or your social studies classes. Um, are there any questions about our middle school program at this time? Okay, then I think I'm going to do one thing. I'm going to take us real quick back to the elementary school because as we talk about technology, I didn't get a chance to show you our makerspace. So this is our elementary makerspace. Um, it is a, a space for, where the, the students can um, learn to create, build, you can see a lot of the technology things here, um, and manipulate um, learning things. Again, this video is just a little bit older. We, have a, we actually have a few power tools here for the students, and we have a range of different things that they can um, work with to uh, learn in the makerspace. And creating and making is part of what's happening in the classroom. 
so the kids can um, sorry the kids can within a when they're learning for example in grade four about the vibrant Vietnam unit so it's the super unit where they're learning about um, their environment the, the students learn about Vietnam and they study the geography of Vietnam because this part of geography is something that would be expected in a grade four classroom in America we focus on then um, Vietnam and we teach the kids about the different foods, the different houses, and the different life of um, the differences that are caused because of the geography of Vietnam between the North and the South. And one of the projects that one of my children had to do here in um, grade four was to build a house using um, the Southern style of building and the makerspace was the area that they came to to build this. We also have a unit uh, or a time, two times a year, we have an Innovate SSIS that happens in the elementary school where the kids showcase a lot of the technology and the innovations that they're creating in the classroom. And we have a, a week long open inquiry session that's called Project X. And in Project X, the kids are looking at answering a question within a theme and then they develop a um, project around that theme. So, um, for example, the theme was movement um, a few years ago, and kids came up with a question of, in, in Vietnam where so many people have motorbikes, how can they safely get their pet to the veterinarian? And um, some of the third and fourth grade students created some attachments that you could hook onto your motorcycle much like you would do a safety seat or a car seat in a bicycle that you could hook onto your motorcycle so that you could put a, a pet carrier onto the side of the motorcycle. Um, it could be removed when you didn't need to take your pet to the vet so that it wasn't constantly on there, but you could put it on when you needed to get your pet safely so that it, it negated the, the need to have two people on a motorbike to take the dog or cat or it also then you weren't so worried that they might jump off the bike and jump into traffic. And we thought that was a pretty clever idea for kids to come up with. So if there are no more questions at this time, oh, we have a quest two questions. Two questions from three again. Uh, the teachers provide private tutoring and does the school have a student council? Um, Twee, you asked if, if teachers provide private tutoring. We actually don't allow our teachers to tutor their own students. That is a conflict of interest. We want to ensure that all students are given the best opportunities in the classroom and the teachers are teaching to, to their students. We do know that sometimes, regardless of what happens in the classroom, some students might need some extra support. Um, we have learning support teachers who can provide that. And we do have some teachers who work after hours to tutor students, but again, they're not allowed to tutor students in their own classroom. And boy, do we have a student council. We have a student council in elementary school, middle school, and high school. And the student councils are responsible for providing um, lots of fun activities for the kids. One of the favorite ones for all three divisions is Spirit Week. So usually leading up to some different competitions that we have because of our scholastic leagues or because of some different things happening on campus. The kids will have um, a week of different crazy dress activities or charity run charity activities that they're doing for a week and that's run by the student council. The elementary student council, I'll take you actually into our auditorium real quick because this is another cool space for us. This is where we have concerts and um, uh, all sorts of different activities and here in the back is actually a full screen. And these chairs that we see in front of us they're retractable. So they come back into the wall and we have a whole seating area in front of us or a whole floor area in front of us. And our student council in the elementary school organizes family movie nights. And so the family movie nights are a charity fundraiser that we use to support both um, the wildlife at risk and the fat Bull orphanage. And families can come in, you bring a mat, you buy some pizza and some popcorn and um, we show some movies. So they do a lot of great activities for them. George says we have one more question. It's from Diogo asks, uh, what is the schedule for our EC3 4? So Diego, Diego, you wanted to know about the schedule for EC3 4. Um, the EC3 4 students come in at 8 in the morning. And um, it, the schedule varies every day because just like the older students, they have art, PE, um, music. They don't take drama class. 
they have Vietnamese and they have library time. So they have five different specials that they'll go to throughout the week. They will have time in the classroom where they do their super units. They will have outdoor learning centers and indoor learning centers. Um, they have lunch and take a nap at school. Um, and so the school day starts at eight and ends at three. Um, okay, so um, I'm gonna now take us up into our high school if we have no more questions for the lower divisions. So as we move into the high school, um, we've already done the library, so I'm gonna take a chance to show you the gym. This is our high school gym. Um, it's, there we go. So we're gonna take a look real quick at the high school gym. The students in, are required to do PE as a class from um, EC3 all the way up until grade 10. This is just one of our gymnasiums. So within the middle school, we actually have a double gymnasium. And that's where the elementary and the middle school students have their classes. But in this gymnasium, um, this gymnasium here is used for the high school classes and for our sports teams. So SSIS is very lucky. We're the only school in the city to belong to three different sports leagues. Our athletes have the opportunities to participate in the city league in a Marissa, which is the Mekong River International Schools Association League, and the CSAC League. So the CSAC League is the Southeast Asian Athletic and um, Sports Council, and they, um, all of these leagues have different sporting opportunities for the kids, as well as cultural exchange and fine arts um, con uh, conference activities for the students. So beginning in grade six through grade 12, the kids do, be, do have the ability to travel for the different sports teams. We have a variety of sports in, available for the kids in high school. So just give me a minute because I think we're up at 10. We have volleyball, basketball, soccer, track and field, cross country, swimming, um, badminton, table tennis, golf, softball, and I'm sure I'm missing one, but I'm not gonna come up with it right now. Sorry for that swimming, I said swimming, right? So we do have a wide range of um, athletic um, opportunities for our kids. We also run a no cut policy at this time. So any child who wants to belong to a team can get on a team. We don't, um, if, we, if they don't make the A team, they can make the B team or the C team. So if the kids really wanna get out and play, we will find a sport for them. Um, and one really cool thing about our high school program is that our sports run after school from 4.30 to 6. So our high school students have class just like everyone else from 8 in the morning until 3 in the afternoon. And then at 3, from 3 to 3.30, we have office hours with our teachers. So our teachers are required to stay in, to be in their offices in case students have questions. Sometimes the students are required to come to the office hours as well. Um, and it's really just a chance for our teachers to make sure that there aren't any extra questions or if the students don't need any support. Again, our teachers can't tutor their own students, but they are required to offer a little bit of extra help if needed during these office hour times, free of charge. Um, and then from 3.30 to 4.30, we run clubs. So the kids have the chance to belong to Model United Nations, the Global Issue Club, the Gold Green Club. Speaking of the Gold Green Club, um, it's such a hit on our campus with the environmental focus and sustainability that um, two of our students have gotten into Ivy League schools after participating in starting the club. Um, we have a young woman who's at Princeton this year after starting the Gold Green Club and really setting up composting spaces on campus and hosting green fairs at the school for the last three years. And then this year, her co-founder is graduating and she's gonna attend Columbia next year. So we do feel that the participation in our clubs and activities are important for the students, just as important as participating in sports. And so we allow our students to do both. By the clubs happening at 3.30 to 4.30 and sports from 4.30 to 6, the students don't have to make a choice. And as a parent, having had children who were interested in both parts of high school, um, it was really important because life makes you make enough choices. If you don't really, it's really hard at a time when you want to explore and you're not sure who you are and what you are to limit the, the exploration for the students. 
Um, we have a question. Yeah, we have several, so let's do one at a time. The first one is um, which languages are available outside of English and Vietnamese and uh, for what grades? So Spanish and Mandarin are the foreign languages that we teach and they, that starts in grade six and goes through grade 12. In grade 10, um, students who speak Korean natively, so who can read and write in Korean, can, they can take Korean starting in grade 10. Uh, the next question to follow up on that, if a student joined in grade seven and had been studying French, for example, would they be able to get extra support uh, starting from scratch in Mandarin or Spanish? Yes, because we, you don't even um, need extra support. In grade seven, you can start Spanish one. You can start Spanish one in grade eight. I actually had my daughter who's in grade eight this year enrolled in Mandarin for two years and she decided that it was not the class that she wanted to continue with into grade eight and she started Spanish one in grade eight. So there's the possibility to start and change. We have kids do that. In high school, you are required to take two years of a foreign language and we do require them to be the same language. So if you do Spanish one in grade nine and decide in grade 10 that you wanna to switch to Mandarin, you need to take two years of Mandarin. So Back to sports, we have one question is, is there a climbing wall on campus? Um, so we've been asked if there's a climbing wall on campus, and no, there is not a climbing wall on the SSIS campus yet. Uh, and another question is, can an athlete participate in multiple sports or participate in the same sport in two different leagues? So the question is if, if kids can participate in multiple sports or the same sports for two different leagues. You are automatically, no matter what team you are on, qualified for the um, city league. So our city leagues at all different levels have tournaments and games. Um, we run our sports in seasons. So kind of like in, in um, America with the football season, the baseball season, the soccer season, we have seasons that happen throughout the year. We do have the conflict of volleyball and soccer or football happening at the same time. So it's very difficult in the high school to be on both teams. Um, and um, at this point in time, if you're in Mar Marissa is in CSAC only exists in high school. So the CSAC league is not in, Mar in middle school. If you're in middle school, you are in Marissa. In high school, at this point in time, if you are on the travel team, the chances are very good that you will be on both the Marissa and the CSAC team. Okay? All right. I'm going to take us up and to look at one or two of the high school classrooms. So if we look here, this is just a general, this is actually, you can see by the different flags in the classroom, um, Senora, Senora um, Ortiz is our Spanish teacher. So these are our students in a beginner Spanish class for the high school. Again, you can see the different technology, you can see the bright open classroom spaces. Um, and um, you can see that the class sizes are relatively small. We do in the elementary school have a class limit of 21 students per class. And in the high school, that number goes up to 22 students. In the elementary school, every classroom has one classroom and one teaching assistant. In the high school, we don't have teaching assistants except for in our different science labs. We have four different science labs. So we, have, um, the, we do teach all different four sciences. We have Spanish and Mandarin. We have both the IP and the AP pro, IB and the AP program in the high school. Um, Actually, at SSIS, you can get the most rigorous high school diploma in the city with starting in um, grade nine, advanced placement or AP courses are available for students. And AP courses are college level courses that are taught in high school. And so why do kids wanna take a college level course in high school? Well, they want the rigor, they're ready for a more challenging class by offering them that same class that they could take three, four years later in college, they can get college credit before they go. So financially for the families, there's an advantage there. And for the students, they're taking a college level class, but by taking it in a high school setting, it's slowed down. In, in, in a US university, the class might be just one semester long, which is half a school year. In, um, in a high school program, that's a whole year class. They do take an external exam at the end that they have to pass to get the credit for university, but they're taking it 
and in a, in a longer period of time, they have their classroom teachers who know them and can support them, and they have their families and the school counselors to support them. Um, we offer the IB Diploma Program for kids in grades 11 and 12, um, and our average score of 34 is um, amongst some of the highest in the city and well above the world average. So we're very proud of our IB program here in, um, at SSIS. We're also really proud of the fact that we allow our students to choose between AP and IB. And sometimes taking an AP course in grade nine and a one or two APs in grade 10, and then the IB diploma program in grades 11 and 12 really sets you up for some of the top-notch universities that our kids are getting into. And um, we don't help, we don't, well, we do help, sorry, not we don't help. Um, we don't expect our parents to be able to know the ins and outs of applying to colleges and what is the best college for their students. We guide the, the parents through this process. We have two dedicated university guidance officers here at school. And starting in grade nine, they meet with families and students and choosing their courses and exploring different course options for the kids. Um, and they work with kids then in grades 11 and 12 to specifically help them determine what is their best fit university. We have um, a large college fair that happens here on campus with over 150 different universities coming. I don't know if any of you with older students have came to the one that we had in September, but we have those every few years. And in addition to that, we have another 200 plus universities that come here on campus to meet our students. And you might say, well, yeah, but why does that matter? Well, from personal experience, I can tell you that matters because the kids get to talk to the representatives from the university. They get to get a feel for the universities. And then when they're applying to the universities and they've built that relationship, their application get look, gets looked at a little differently than a student who is just blindly applying to the school. It really works in the kid's advantage. And the relationship that our university guidance officers are building with these university counselors goes a long way in getting our kids into these schools as well because they know that their kid, these kids are coming from a quality program. And when, they, when we have questions, we know who, at the university who we can call up and ask. But we don't just support our kids to get into great universities. Throughout SSIS, we have a lot of support for our students. One of our core values is sense of self. And we put a lot of work into developing the kid, student's sense of self and really working in hand in hand with the core value of respect for all. And we know that students along the way have struggles and sometimes need a little bit of more support than they can just get at home from their families. So we have, count, we have an elementary psychologist or a school psychologist in the elementary school. We have a counselor in the elementary school to work with students. We have a counselor in the middle school. And we have another social, besides the university guidance, we have a social emotional counselor for our high school students. So we really feel that when the students leave our school, not only are they academically ready for the, the challenges and the rigor of college, but emotionally they're ready for that next step as well. And nowadays that's more important than sometimes just the academic rigor. Um, I wanna show you one last area in our high, uh, Sky high school. I'm going to take you into the art studio. So we talked a lot about the academic rigor, and I don't want you to think that it's only math and science that are important at school. But we are very much um, in tune with getting kids into great art schools, great music schools around the world as well. Students can take art at the AP and at the IB level, and art is required from early childhood all the way up into the 12th grade. And again, once um, realizing that this video is um, or this tour is a couple of years old. If we were to show you the campus now, as we leave the art room, we could walk you across to the STEM robotics lab that we have now built into our um, high school building. Um, SSIS is the only school in um, Vietnam to be invited to the VEX Robotics World Championships in Kentucky. Um, this year, we hosted the very first VEX War. Um, robotics champ, um, championship in Vietnam. We had um, six different schools participating. And once again, SSIS was able to win a spot to, or an invitation to the world championship. Unfortunately, with the current health situation around the world, our students weren't able to go. Um, and they're 
obviously very disappointed, but we were nonetheless excited and very proud of them for this accomplishment. So are there any questions about our high school program? Not yet, but we have a question about the deadline for admission confirmation for next year. Um, we are we run on a rolling admissions uh, season, so we are accepting applications throughout the year. We do have a large number of applications in already, and are we are able to conduct remote testing, um, and are running some different um, systems for our earliest our early childhood learners. So if you have specific questions, I would welcome you to go back to our website. I'm, I'm gonna take you back to our website actually and show you where. So if we go here to the Let's Talk button, um, if you've not submitted an inquiry and we don't have any information on you and, or you haven't, um, and you want us to reach out and talk to you and set up an appointment to do a, a um, either a Zoom call, a phone call, or a Skype call, go ahead and fill in the inquiry here on this form. Click on the inquiry button here. Or if you've already done an inquiry, you just hadn't really seen the campus or you got enough information now that you feel you're ready to make an application, go ahead and hit the application button here and we'll be in touch with you to um, set up a time to chat and answer any additional questions that you have. Um, I will say that in some grade levels, we don't have a lot of space available. So the sooner you apply, the better your chances are of getting a seat. Are there any other questions? Do you think that school will reopen in time for the 2020-2021 school year? Um, I wish I had a crystal ball to give you a definitive answer on that question. Our school year for 2021 is opening mid-August, and I sure am hoping that we will be able to. But rest assured, if we're if the school isn't able to, learning will continue. School has our students have been in school and have been learning and are on tar, are on um, schedule. That's the word I was looking for. Sorry, they are on schedule to hit the standards and benchmarks for their grade levels at the end of this school year in June. Um, and we, if we have to open in a hybrid method, if we have to open in virtual school, then that's what we will do. We have an amazing teaching staff here at SSIS. Over 80% um, of our teachers have master's degrees in education. We have teachers who are getting master's now as they're doing virtual learning with our students. We have um, Apple Distinguished Educators. We have Google Educators here at the school. We are ready and equipped and um, if needed, we're hoping it's not needed because we do miss our students and want them back on campus, but we are ready and equipped to go to virtual school for the next school year if needed. Any questions? Uh, this is from Johnny. Is there a summer program and what uh, grade would you start? Hi, Johnny. Yes, we do. You're asking about a summer program, and yes, we do have a summer program. It starts for um, this year we'll start it actually a little bit younger. We're going to take four-year-olds, four to five-year-olds, um, and we'll offer four, four weeks of different summer activities or summer school for the kids with a, with a big emphasis on English um, as an additional language. And we have a question from Douglas. Uh, when do you think we will have interviews for ECC? Douglas, we are actually not conducting interviews for EC students. Um, and if you have an application in, I hope you got the email that we sent last a couple weeks ago. But if you didn't um, and you're thinking of putting in an application, go ahead. We are going to do um, a conditional admissions to EC students. So students will be admitted based on their previous school reports and their teacher recommendations. Um, and then we will do an assessment through, uh, we will do multiple assessments throughout the first semester to make sure that um, we're the best fit school for the students. So if those are all the questions, I'd like to thank you for taking time on this, um, on your busy days and um, spending a little time with me. It, it was um, for the first time doing a virtual guided, guided virtual tour. It's a, a, a little bit of a different situation. Normally I would shake your hand at the end of a tour and tell you, um, I hope to hear from you again. I do hope to hear from you guys again. 
If you want me to reach out and contact you, please send George a message now and we'll get a hold of you and schedule some one-on-one um, -on -one calls. Um, and otherwise, um, stay safe, stay healthy, and wash your hands. Enjoy your day.